Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? All the Annie Poke YouTubers, Mother's Basement, Super Eye Patch Wolf, For Neverworld, Giguk, Team Four Star, it doesn't matter which creator we are talking about. Because if you love watching videos about the Pokemon anime or other anime on YouTube, then you will want to listen to this because your favorite creators, myself included, are in more danger than ever. The story is long, it is troubling, it is heartbreaking, but it must be heard and it must be shared. Firstly, have you heard of Suede? Basically, he is the godfather of Pokemon anime YouTubing and he is a super funny dude. With a dedicated fan base who has made funny reviews of old Pokemon anime for something like 8 years now. Unfortunately, something really, really bad has just happened to him and it has much broader and truly frightening implications for anyone making videos about anime. If you haven't heard of Suede or his predicament, then do check out the final video on his channel before the channel and 8 years of his work work are deleted within three months. I will explain his story in some level of detail momentarily, but his story, his videos, and his tweets need to be boosted. You might even consider joining his Patreon since the pillar of his family's well-being has just been smashed into oblivion. Firstly, some background information. As you may know, YouTube has a system through which copyright holders can protect their intellectual property by issuing claims or strikes to channels who use their images, videos, or music. From a creator's perspective, claims merely prevent the creator from collecting revenue from a video, whereas strikes actually remove the stricken videos from YouTube. And if you get three strikes, then your channel and any channels connected to it, and basically your entire livelihood are out of the game forever. Fortunately for anime reviewers, film critics, documentary makers, and other people who kind of delve into this gray area of copyright law, for whom it is actually difficult to provide a commentary or critique on the source material without directly referring to or including some of these copyrighted materials in their videos. In many western countries, there is a concept known as fair use or fair dealings, which basically serves as a legal defense for those who use the copyrighted works of other entities for the aforementioned purposes among others. And the bulk of anime YouTube would not even exist without this defense. Of course, not all channels do follow the guidelines to a T, and many are in the wrong. But YouTube itself does hold the concept of fair use in high regard, and has actively stepped in to prevent companies from striking down channels that have a strong fair use case. Bailing out, for instance, creators in the Pokemon anime community, like Lumios Trainer Zack, or Pokemon Ranger Boy 12 when their channels were basically put on life support last year. However, this situation becomes really hairy when we factor in differences in copyright law and different interpretations of fair use or fair dealings around the world. Long story short, in Japan, the interpretation of fair use is so narrow that it is entirely useless as a defense for creators of anime content on YouTube. Of course, we can't expect every country in the world to adhere to these Western conceptions of fair use, but this creates massive problems when distributing online content that can cross borders as easily as YouTube videos can. Platforms like Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu can geo-block their content to avoid somewhat similar issues around IP rights, but YouTube, on the other hand, does not allow the vast majority of its creators any control over where their own videos are shown, which is as messed up as it sounds. On the other hand, copyright holders have a vast degree of control over the YouTube system and can come after creators literally anywhere in the world via the YouTube platform. For the purpose of our discussion on anime YouTube, what all of this means is that Japanese companies who own or manage the rights to various anime IP can use the YouTube content ID system to attack creators in other countries with claims or strikes on content that is, in many cases, perfectly defensible in the creator's home country's legal environments. Although the system provides well-intentioned mechanisms to fight piracy, it also enables these companies to run slipshod over creators as they see fit, even if these creators do follow the fair use guidelines in their own countries. Getting hit with copyright issues on content that should be acceptable in your own country is frustrating at best if you are actually able to successfully dispute these issues, and it is career-ending at worst if you cannot. 
This already sounds real bad, but the Suede situation brings a whole new bundle of horror to the table. However, before we dig into that story, let us first illustrate what we have discussed thus far with an overview of a high-profile anime YouTube fair use debacle that broke out in December 2021. I am talking about the Totally Not Mark fiasco. In December 2021, the YouTuber Totally Not Mark was hit with an astounding 150 copyright strikes from Toei Animation, the company that manages One Piece and Dragon Ball, among many other properties. And just as a reminder, it only takes three strikes to have your channel wiped off of YouTube, and yet Mark would have to fight 50 times as many strikes, one by one, painfully pleading his cause as to why each video fell under fair use, whereas his attackers were able to make these strikes mere minutes apart, without even properly reviewing his content, themselves not paying any respect to YouTube's video review guidelines. As a result, in the span of a day, a man's entire livelihood was ravaged by this slanted system. Fortunately for Totally Not Mark, after he had been emotionally and financially ground into the dust, the public discourse around the issue hit such a critical mass that someone with sway at YouTube got involved to kick off negotiations between Mark, the American YouTube big boys, the Japanese branch of YouTube, and Toei Animation itself. And this situation was unheard of at the time. And in the end, while not a smoking gun by any means, a solution fairly favorable to Mark was reached whereby his videos were geo-blocked in Japan and restored everywhere else in the world. And in order for Toei to take down his videos in other regions of the world, they would have to win fair use cases in non-Japanese courts. And as a result, it became much more difficult to come after Mark and his content as the risks were flipped on them. This was a small victory in the battle, but what happened next to another anime YouTuber, Swade, was even by comparison to Mark's situation, really, really bad. And yet, at this point, you might be wondering, why don't all anime YouTubers simply geoblock their content in Japan? The answer is that because, as mentioned earlier, we cannot. Aside from truly exceptional situations, of which the Totally Not Mark situation is the first I've ever heard of, geoblocking is something that is only granted to YouTubers who sign contracts with multi-channel networks, which will take 20% or more of a YouTuber's revenues in exchange for, well, nothing from the companies who have approached me that would make me want to give up 20% of my hard-earned revenue, which is not even that much relative to the number of hard hours worked to produce each of video. And yet, unless you pay through the teeth for an MCN membership, have your own significant IP, or have YouTube grant you special privileges as they have done with Mark, which was wonderful to see, then you are basically a sitting duck for companies in different legal jurisdictions anywhere around the world who can take pot shots at you as they wish. They strike you three times and you are out forever. The funny thing is that geoblocking itself isn't even a complete solution. I recently spoke with the guys over at Plot Armor and learned that even after joining an MCN for geo coverage, channels like Plot Armor or Master Media still get copyright strikes. Just less frequently. And thus, while diminished to some extent, the cycle of fear, frustration, and financial losses continues. What geoblocking does do is probably give you more of a fighting chance if you do need to resolve a nightmare dispute like the one we are about to discuss, as you could argue to both YouTube and the courts that the content you are being attacked over is not even available in the country where the suit has been filed. But just imagine being expected to adhere to the laws of countries all around the world while not even being able to select which countries your videos are available in. This is an absolute insult to the people who work hard and put their necks on the line to deliver this kind of content. Not just anime YouTubers, but Japanese pro wrestling commentary YouTubers, documentary makers on YouTube, you name it. 
when Japanese IP is involved, people are going to get screwed because of YouTube's flawed system. So one has to wonder why is a feature so crucial to our security held beyond our grasp? I suppose it's because if anybody at all could geoblock their content, then it would make real legitimate pirates much harder to deal with, hurting copyright holders and putting YouTube at the risk of heavy lawsuits. And in this regard, the policy makes sense. But at the very least, geoblocking should be made available to content creators making transformative content that adheres to YouTube's fair use guidelines to mitigate at least some portion of the ongoing mental and financial damage to our lives. Like that feeling of having to live every day of your life, anxious to check your email because there is some possibility that some office intern has decided to take a swipe at your livelihood before they go on lunch break. YouTube often talks about about making changes to improve the mental health of its creators, but they have yet to put their money where their mouths are. Anyways, now that we've established some context by discussing copyright and fair use, the totally not mark case, and the cruel or at the very least negligent gatekeeping of geoblocking, it's time to move on to the next chapter of this discussion which takes everything to an absolutely more horrifying level and could destroy anime YouTube as we know it, either forcibly or by means of its chilling effect on creators. So let's talk about Suede. And please do check out his video about his experience and show him some love. The link is in the description. As I explained earlier, Suwaid has been uploading funny reviews of the Pokemon anime for about eight years from New Zealand. And he has basically sent the standard for parodical abridged style Pokemon anime reviews on YouTube, but that journey pretty much came to an end on January 25th when Suwaid made an announcement indicating that ShowPro had circumvented the YouTube copyright system by serving him not a copyright strike, but instead a legal notice submitted directly via YouTube system. System. Of course, he had already been hit by numerous copyright strikes over the years, but at least those strikes could be appealed because the buck lied with YouTube and within the realm of Western legal conceptions. However, by simply filing a small claim with the Japanese courts, and submitting evidence of that claim through YouTube's system instead of a conventional copyright strike. Shopro successfully disabled his ability to even appeal the issue, leaving him with the following options. One, pay an 80,200 yen fine plus legal fees and have his channel deleted. Two, don't pay the fine and legal fees and have his channel deleted, plus probably never be able to visit Japan. Or three, front the cost of an expensive legal battle in Japan that he would certainly lose due to the country's different approach to fair use. What a fantastic set of options for a man who makes videos for English speakers from New Zealand. This technique is morally underhanded but legally acceptable and a guaranteed checkmate since Suede's videos, like almost everyone's videos, were viewable in Japan thanks to YouTube gatekeeping their geoblocking feature. And because instead of a normal strike, a legal notice was entered into their system that could not be appealed. And this is a silver bullet to content creators. And it does not matter if you follow fair use or fair dealings guidelines in your country or within YouTube's guidelines in the countries that you actually broadcast to because you are being tried in a court where those defenses do not apply and YouTube gives that court precedence. I must add that Shopro is operating within their legal rights in Japan and the staff I guess are probably doing what they think is right. But regardless of your views on copyright laws, I find it very unnerving when foreign companies can exploit the systems of a multinational company to reach into your own country and destroy you and your family. It is what it is and I feel truly terrible for Suede. But that said, what actions can creators possibly take in the face of such reckless regard for the legal environments of other countries? 
Firstly, everyone is calling for access to geoblocking for normal creators, us, the commoners, who don't want to give up 20 to 30% of our income in exchange for an MCN membership that probably gives us almost no other benefits. As this geoblocking will at least provide somewhat of a shield for us against these companies who want to step across borders and abuse foreign creators with their laws. Secondly, if these companies would just come to the table for discussion, which they don't seem willing to do, or if the Japanese copyright law could be further amended, then some of these issues might be alleviated in the long term. However, I personally have no faith that either of these things will happen during our careers, so I encourage creators in the anime space to consider their appetite for risk alongside some of the following options. One, keep playing your YouTube game as is and just pray that you never get hit with this instant kill technique and the related monetary penalties. Two, consider joining an MCN for access to the geoblocking feature to at least get some protection moving forward. I was told that ScreenWave and Frederator are good, but I don't speak from experience, so you will have to do your own research. And your other option is three, completely change the way you make videos, whether it be by finding a way to produce your current brand of content without any images or clips from the shows or shifting into an adjacent market like video games or commentary, which is much safer. And while you're at it, you will probably want to delete conceal or otherwise alter any of your backlog that doesn't meet Japan's basically non-existent fair use criteria because yes your own country's legal concepts apparently do not hold any water in this battle so you will have to weigh the financial as well as the mental costs and benefits of these options based on your personal circumstances and choose what is right for you but if you have any other ideas please do let me know but regardless of your approach I would recommend trying to build a strong stronger off-site presence in case your channel does get nuked. Personally, I have already removed over 60 of my videos that probably did fit the guidelines for fair use overseas, but which could be held against me in a Japanese court of law. And I will continue knocking off videos based on my assessment of the risk that they present. Furthermore, I will also be changing my content delivery style quite drastically in order to tighten up the security of the channel. This process will be financially devastating for me, but I think it would be even worse to lose the community that we have spent the past five years building, so I have little choice. And I'm also considering Patreon and other avenues through which I could provide value while also hopefully recovering some portion of the lost income. As I told Suede during a brief email chat the other night, we now live in very disturbing times as anime creators on YouTube. And I can feel everyone's discomfort through their videos and tweets. Because with the emergence of this new deadly technique, producing anime content about the shows we love has become riskier than ever before. Now that your channel's existence is in control of lawyers in a foreign country, while YouTube continues to gatekeep the features that would at least give you some semblance of security. In short, we are all sitting ducks just sitting here awaiting a checkmate with no opportunity for recourse and just hoping that it never comes. And that is very, very scary. Well, that is where we are at with anime content creation on YouTube in 2022. So at the very least, do send your warm wishes to Suede. He is the first, although he is certainly not the last. And I just hope that we can all make it through. But if we don't, we will find a way to come back. This is not the end. And with that said, see you in the next video in my Japan Court of Law safe format, which I will try my best to make interesting without using any images from the show. I'm curious what you think about the situation. And as always, let's chat.